Hello everyone, we're covering a favorite topic today of creationists that is mired in misconceptions. So, let's jump right in. Often, instead of engaging with actual evidence for evolution from the fossil record, creationists opt to point to what they call evolutionary frauds in an attempt to discredit paleontologists. Inevitably, creationists don't know anything about the history of these so-called frauds, so misinformation about the alleged frauds runs rampant. Here, we're going to look at the history of the few examples creationists bring up to dispel any misunderstandings. But before we do, it is important to note two things. Such frauds are really rare, and not one of the so-called frauds was exposed by creationists. During our examination of these accusations, we need to make the distinction between fraud, which is a deliberate deception with the intent to secure personal gain, and an honest mistake, which are often equivocated by creationists. We also need to determine whether the frauds in question were conducted to promote Darwinism, or evolutionism, as creationists often claim they were, or to promote something else entirely. Another point to consider is whether the fraud or mistake fooled the scientific community for a significant period of time before it was exposed or corrected, because creationists often use these examples to claim that scientists are easily fooled when something appears to support their beliefs. The first fraud is a famous one, Piltdown Man. This was a set of skull fragments and tools discovered by amateur archaeologist Charles Dawson near Piltdown Village in Sussex, England in 1912 that was described as a plasticine hominin dating about 500,000 years ago, and so giving Britain a nice human ancestor to compete with ones found in Europe and Asia. From the very beginning, some biologists, especially the ones who were not British, were skeptical of the find. For example, Garrett Smith Miller Jr. stated in 1915 that, quote, deliberate malice could hardly have been more successful than the hazards of deposition and so breaking the fossils as to give free scope to individual judgment in fitting the parts together, close quote. Miller was also one of four independent biologists, the other three being David Watterson, Marcelin Boole, and Franz Weidenreich, to conclude within the first 11 years of the fossil's discovery that it was a human skull attached to an orangutan jaw. Watterson even remarked in 1913 that, quote, it seems to me to be as inconsequent to refer to the mandible and the cranium to the same individual as it would be to articulate a chimpanzee foot with the bones of an essentially human thigh and leg, close quote. It's important to remember that the science world was distracted by a couple of world wars, and the Piltdown fossils were tucked away in the British Museum all that time, leaving only cast to be studied by scientists. Belief in the authenticity of the fossil remained among some anthropologists, especially British ones, even though the fossil began to make less and less sense as more hominids were discovered in Africa and Asia. In other words, it didn't fit with the evolutionary model that was emerging from the newer finds. Eventually, Piltdown Man was no longer considered as a plausible human ancestor even before it was exposed. Finally, in 1953, new tools became available and the Piltdown fossils were subjected to a fresh look, revealing them to be a not-that-well-done hoax. Scholars speculated for years who might have been the culprit, suspects ranging even to Sherlock Holmes creator Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, but Dawson, who is known to have presented questionable artifacts before, is regarded today as the likeliest soul faker. So, Piltdown Man wasn't created by a gang of anthropologists to further evolution, and it was evolutionary biologists that exposed the hoax. This and the fact that Piltdown Man was doubted by biologists on both its authenticity and the importance it had in human evolution from the very beginning shows that evolutionary scientists do re-examine their own evidence. A second alleged fraud is Nebraska Man, and creationists routinely bring that up along with Piltdown Man. In 1917, a rancher and amateur geologist named Harold Cook found a tooth that he sent to paleontologist Henry Fairfield Osborne at the American Museum of Natural History. Mammal molars can look a lot alike, even for a trained paleontologist, 
and Osborne incorrectly identified the tooth as belonging to an ape that he named Hesperopithecus Harold Cookie. But Osborne didn't claim it belonged to a human ancestor. In fact, he said, quote, I have not stated that Hesperopithecus was either an ape man or in the direct line of human ancestry, because I consider it quite possible that we may discover anthropoid apes with teeth closely imitating those of man. Close quote. And, quote, until we secure more of the dentition, or parts of the skull, or of the skeleton, we cannot be certain whether Hesperopithecus is a member of the Simiidae or of the Hominidae. Close quote. So, like an actual scientist, he was tentative in his conclusions, which is the opposite of how creationists portray him. Creationists also point to the famous drawing of Nebraska Man as evidence that the anthropologist just drew up an entire human from a single tooth. In reality, the picture hailed from a popular magazine, not a scientific one. And, like Piltdown Man, the majority of the anthropological community never accepted Nebraska Man. Just two years after Osborne described the tooth, anthropologist George Grant McCurdy said, quote, Osborne described two molars from the Pliocene of Nebraska. He attributed these to an anthropoid primate to which he has given the name Hesperopithecus. The teeth are not well preserved, so that the validity of Osborne's determination has not yet been generally accepted. Close quote. Then, in 1927, the Science Magazine article, Hesperopithecus, apparently not an ape nor a man, identified the tooth as belonging to an ancient peccary. So, it started with an honest mistake, not a fraud, being made by one scientist, and the fraudulent drawing was to promote a popular magazine, not evolution, which didn't fool any scientist. Again, Evolutionary biologists, not creationists, uncovered the truth of the matter, with later creationists wildly attempting to revise history to fit their narrative. You should see a pattern forming here. Instead of evolutionary biologists credulously believing anything, they fought each other over the veracity of their fellow scientists' claims. This trend continues. A fossil named Archaeoraptor was unveiled by National Geographic in 1999 as a missing link between non-avian theropods and birds. The market in China for fossils to fill local museums acted as a spur for some unscrupulous fossil traders to give nature a little helping hand, or chisel. The fossil got illegally smuggled out of China and ended up being sold to Sylvia Zirkus, an amateur paleontology enthusiast, for 80,000 US dollars. He got duped, to say the least. However, after investigation, many paleontologists told Zirkus that it was likely a composite, not a legit fossil. Even after contacting other paleontologists, the same conclusion that it was a fraud was made, which Zirkus refused to accept. Both Science and Nature magazine were skeptical of the fossil, declining to print papers on it by the team who had acquired it, and independent science researchers soon determined it to be a hoax, including, I apologize in advance, Joe Jung, Julia Clark, Timothy Rao, and numerous others. They determined that the creature was made from part of several different fossil species. The most likely explanation for this is a Chinese farmer dug up some partial fossils and put them together in order to sell it for a higher price, because complete fossils are more valuable. Again, the intent of the hoaxer was not to promote evolution. The fossil species that were part of the Archaeoraptor assemblage were Yanornis, Microraptor, and some unknown animal. Fun fact, Microraptor turned out to be much more interesting as a solo fossil than the hoaxed one it was briefly included in, for later specimens showed it had feathers on both arms and hind legs, offering fresh clues to the early evolution of flight in dinosaurs. The irony here is that the hoax was constructed using a genuine transitional fossil. There are now very many fossils demonstrating the transition from non-avian theropods to birds, none of them hoaxes, such as Archaeopteryx, Shautingia, Aurornis, Anchiornis, Balar, and Microraptor. Now remember, not one of these alleged frauds, just three, spread over nearly 150 years, was created by professional evolutionary biologists to further evolution. And, in each case, evolutionary biologists, without any aid from creationists, determined that the fossils were fakes or misidentified. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.